Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about writing a character with skills you don't have. So we've talked before on this channel about playing a character that's different than you, but that video was more about playing a character with a different background or personality than you. So maybe they were a different gender, a different socioeconomic class, a different race, things of that nature. So I'm going to link that video up in the card because that is still relevant advice for the stuff we're going to talk about today. But today we're going to get into something a little bit different and a little bit more specific. What about writing a character with a skill you don't have? Maybe they're smarter than you, or they're more charismatic, or maybe they're an expert cook and you can barely handle hamburger helper. Maybe they're an expert electrician or landscaper or hacker or any other skill that takes hours and hours of dedicated study to learn. Now we're going to talk about this in terms of narrative role play. If you're playing a role play with dice, then what I recommend is letting the dice help you determine what's going on with that particular character's skill. Just like we would use dice to determine combat because we're not going to fight each other in real life, I would say for skills that you don't have, use dice. But what about when it comes to narrative role play? For those, we're going to need to put in a little more work. So how do we role play something that we know nothing about? What if that something is a thing that you don't even have the capacity to be able to get that skill in real life? The first step is to research that skill or ability. Find a subreddit of people that are talking about that particular skill or ability. Look up blogs or vlogs of people talking about it. Read books that are help books on that particular subject. And you can do this research for anything. First, also, think about that skill or ability and what steps someone might go through to gain that particular skill or ability. And start to go through those beginning steps yourself as much as you can. Some skills, of course, are going to be more straightforward than others. If you're playing a surgeon, you need to look up medical knowledge. But even for skills that don't have a logical progression, we can still do this. For example, you want to play a character that's smarter than yourself. Look up maybe troubleshooting techniques or problem-solving skills. Maybe you want to play a character that's more charismatic. Research marketing techniques or dating advice or other skills that tap into things that make people tick. Now, of course, you're not learning these skills to be able to actually do them in the wild. You're learning the skills to be able to write about them. But you do need to know how people that have these skills talk about them so that you're able to convey that in your writing. So if you're able to actually practice these skills, go for it. That's one of the better things that you can do, but that's not always going to be possible. For example, if you're playing a character who's a dentist, I don't recommend actually going around and poking around in people's mouths. So you're going to use your best judgment on this. So let's say we've done our research, we're all excited to play our character with the shiny new skill, but of course you're going to be playing against somebody else in your thread. So what if you're playing against someone who actually has this skill in real life. I think this comes up most often when we're trying to play a smart character and we realize that the partner that we're playing with is smarter than we are. So in that situation, what do you do about it? I recommend here out of character plotting. Make sure you and your partner have a general idea of where the thread is going. This is going to help ensure that your supposedly smart character doesn't do something really stupid because your partner out of character happened to think of something more clever than you out of character did. I would also recommend leveraging those skills in your roleplay partners. For example, if you're in a roleplay group and you're playing a teacher and somebody that's in your roleplay group is actually a teacher, ask them what they think about your character and if that character is realistic for somebody who's a teacher. For the most part, people want to share their knowledge and expertise. So when you ask them these questions, they're probably going to be really excited to explain to you all of the different things that they know as somebody that already has that skill. And this is going to help you learn a lot to ensure that your character is even better in the future. So that brings up another point, capacity. If you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh my God, that sounds really hard. Let's first take a step back. 
Just like with playing characters with a different background or personality than you, self-awareness is key. Do you have the time to do the research? Do you have the capacity to learn the basics of this skill that your character has? Now, of course, you're not going to know the answer to this until you actually start doing the research. But while you're doing the research, I would recommend asking yourself this type of question. Then, of course, it's also good to ask yourself the ultimate question. Why do I want to play this kind of character? Understanding yourself, your motivations, and your capacity is going to help you with determining if this goal of creating this character is something that you have the ability to do. And not only that, if you're going to even have fun doing it. Also, be patient with yourself. Just like playing a character whose personality is not like yours, playing a character with a skill you don't have is going to take time to learn how to do. Your first attempt might be terrible, but that's okay. Nobody comes out of the womb with these skills, and when you're writing them, you don't necessarily need all the same knowledge as someone actually doing the skill, but you are going to need some, and it's going to take time to learn. At the end of the day, roleplay should be fun. So if you're looking to play a more charismatic character because you want to feel more charismatic in your real life, this is great because you're taking that time to research, you're using it for your character, and you're using it for yourself. But if you're looking to play a charismatic character because you think other people are going to find it cool, but you don't necessarily care to put in that work, then maybe let's reevaluate that choice of character. So what if you're committed to doing this, you know it's going to take time and you're willing to put in the work, but you're still a little nervous? The thing I like to do when I'm trying out a new character with a new skill or a new ability is to put them in a role play group where they're sort of like my second or third character. So that means that they aren't the only character that I'm playing in that particular group, and it takes some of the pressure off of them being written amazingly because I've got other characters that I know I am writing really well. Or maybe if you're somebody that does more one-on-one -on -one role play, you should first play this character with somebody that you have previous role plays with, where you already have an established trust and rapport with that particular role player. And another tip, just like we talked about in the playing a character that's not like you video, give yourself some accountability. This is going to help ensure not only that you feel safer in doing this new character, but it's also going to make sure that in the end, the results are better. So what things do you guys do when you're playing a character with a new skill that you don't have? Let me know down below. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.